In the anatomy video lecture, the cell types that compose the ductal glomerular apparatus of the kidney are discussed. These cells play essential roles in the regulation of blood volume and blood pressure. Let's take a moment to read the following clinical vignette. Notice this older patient's shortness of breath with minimal exertion and swelling of his lower extremities. These are symptoms suggestive of congestive heart failure. Also, his history of hypertension is a risk factor for cardiac disease and CHF. The diagnosis of CHF is also supported by his physical examination, that is, his jugular venous distension and pretibial edema reflect congestion of the systemic capillaries, which is common in right-sided heart failure. Also, the presence of an S3 gallop is related to the rapid filling of the left ventricle during diastole. The anatomic features of his CHF are reflected in other portions of the vignette. For example, on chest x-ray, his enlarged cardiac silhouette, and on echo, his dilated left ventricle are consistent with his left displaced apical impulse identified during auscultation. His left ventricular ejection fraction is well below the normal range of 55 to 65 percent. This may have been reduced as the result of intrinsic problems with his heart muscle. This clinical correlate has three learning objectives and at the conclusion of this exercise you should be able to 1. Describe the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system and the pathophysiology of congestive heart failure. 2. Diagnose CHF based on clinical presentation, physical examination, and imaging studies. 3. Recognize the drugs used in the treatment of CHF that have proven survival benefit and explain their mechanisms of action. We will begin with our first learning objective. Now, effective cardiac performance is dependent, in part, on the kidney's control of circulating blood volume. In the kidney, Secretion of the enzyme renin by the juxtaglomerular cells is the key step in the regulation of fluid and electrolyte homeostasis and blood pressure. There are three mechanisms that control renin secretion. The baroreceptors of the juxtaglomerular cells of the afferent arterioles, the sodium concentration at the macula densa in the distal convoluted tubules, and sympathetic innervation of the kidney by the beta-1 adrenergic receptors of the juxtaglomerular cells. Under certain physiologic conditions, like when blood volume is low, the juxtaglomerular cells increase renin secretion. Plasma renin cleaves angiotensinogen to form angiotensin 1, which is then converted to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE, in the capillaries of the lungs and other organs. Plasma angiotensin II has multiple actions on different vascular and organ systems that ultimately increase extracellular fluid volume and arterial blood pressure. It causes vasoconstriction of renal and systemic arterioles, which raises total peripheral resistance and blood pressure. It also increases secretion of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex, which promotes sodium and fluid reabsorption and excretion of potassium by the renal distal tubules to increase extracellular fluid volume. These actions of angiotensin II are mediated by angiotensin I receptors. Let us now describe the pathophysiology of CHF. The development of congestive heart failure results from an inciting cardiac injury, for example, chronic hypertension. As a result, the pathologic changes lead to a reduction in stroke volume and cardiac output. These trigger a cascade of neurohumoral responses, particularly by the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system leading to systemic vasoconstriction mediated by angiotensin II and salt retention mediated by aldosterone. Sodium and water retention accounts for the initial expansion of intravascular volume and the subsequent rise in extravascular volume. This manifests clinically with the appearance of typical signs and symptoms of CHF such as shortness of breath, elevated jugular venous distension, and dependent edema. We will now address our second learning objective. 
CHF is a syndrome that develops when the cardiac output becomes insufficient to meet the metabolic demand of the body's tissues and organs. There are nearly 5.2 million people in the United States suffering from CHF. It is more prevalent among African Americans, but among all ethnic groups, the prevalence increases significantly with age. CHF represents approximately 20% of all admissions among patients over 65 years old. Recall that the development of CHF results from an inciting cardiac injury. The most common causes of CHF include myocardial infarction and other forms of ischemic heart disease, hypertension, cardiomyopathy, and valvular heart disease. The morphologic changes of the heart in CHF depend on the underlying cause. Commonly, the increased mechanical work of the heart due to A, pressure or volume overload, or B, trophic adrenergic signaling causes myocytes to increase in size or hypertrophy. This cumulatively produces an increase in the size and weight of the heart, two to three times of normal. In response to increases in pressure, such as in hypertension or valvular disease, the ventricles develop pressure overload hypertrophy, which usually causes a concentric increase in wall thickness. In contrast, Volume overload hypertrophy is characterized by ventricular dilation with normal wall thickness. Some of the important changes in cardiac hypertrophy, such as myocardial remodeling and fibrosis, occur in response to excess angiotensin II and aldosterone formation. Therapeutic inhibition of these processes provides important health benefits to patients with CHF. As a consequence of these pathologic changes, patients may develop signs and symptoms of congestion and hypoperfusion. These include shortness of breath, or dyspnea, typically worse when lying flat, which is called orthopnea. Nocturnal breathlessness and cough, known as cardiac asthma, or paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Palpitations, foot and ankle swelling, fatigue, and exercise intolerance. Typical findings on physical examination include tachypnea, rowels or wheezing, a displaced apical impulse, an S3 gallop related to rapid filling of the left ventricle during diastole, an S4 gallop related to reduced left ventricular compliance, pulses alternans or an alternating strong and weak pulse, jugular venous distension, pulmonary edema, pleural effusions, hepatomegaly, ascites, and lower extremity edema. When diagnosing CHF, a chest x-ray may show enlarged cardiac silhouette and the presence of pulmonary edema or pleural effusions. but echocardiography is more accurate and can delineate the anatomy and function of the cardiac chambers and valves. In particular, the left ventricular ejection fraction may decrease well below normal, which is 55 to 65 percent. Finally, measurement of plasma B-type natriuretic peptide, or BNP, released by the cardiac ventricles is elevated in CHF. Let's turn our attention to our third learning objective. Pharmacological inhibition of the actions of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system is widely used, not only in the treatment of patients with CHF, but also of those with hypertension, pulmonary and systemic edema, diabetic nephropathy, and cirrhosis of the liver. The drugs used are beta blockers, specifically carbetolol and metoprolol, angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, or ACE inhibitors, such as captopril and enalapril, angiotensin receptor blockers, or ARBs, such as losartan, aldosterone receptor antagonists, such as spironolactone, loop diuretics, such as furosemide, ionotropes, such as digoxin. The first four classes of drugs, that is, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, and the aldosterone receptor antagonists are drugs of choice because they have all proven to reduce mortality. Each of the four modalities of choice has one major effect, you get improved cardiac output with beta blockers. You get decreased adverse cardiac remodeling with ACE inhibitors and ARBs. You get decreased myocardial fibrosis with the aldosterone blockers. In the diagram of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, these drugs act at the following sites. Beta blockers block the beta-1 receptors on the juxtaglomerular cells, leading to a decrease in renin secretion.
ACE inhibitors in ARBs suppress the formation of angiotensin II and its action at the level of the angiotensin I receptor, thereby lowering arterial resistance, increasing cardiac output, and increasing excretion of sodium in the urine or naturesis. Spironolactone blocks the sodium retaining action of aldosterone on the renal tubules and reverses the excretion of potassium, thus acting as an effective diuretic. Let's return to our vignette and apply what we've just discussed. What are the mechanisms of action of drugs known to have a survival benefit in patients with this disorder? These drugs act by blocking renal sympathetic activity as seen with beta blockers, blocking the formation or actions of angiotensin II as seen with ACE inhibitors and ARBs, and blocking the action of aldosterone as seen with spironolactone and aldosterone receptor antagonist.